Hello there. In this video, we'll walk you through a connected developer workflow on the Atlassian platform with a focus on Bitbucket Cloud. I'll show you how Bitbucket and Jira work together to keep teams in sync and reduce context switching, the pull request experience, including AI functionality, walk through our built-in CI/CD functionality and how you can build an end-to-end -end delivery workflow, how code is seamlessly connected across Atlassian tools, including Compass and Jira Service Management, and we'll also touch on some ways you can use Forge, our app development platform, to customize your instance to enforce code quality and manage CI/CD at scale across your organization. On the AI front, beyond what we'll talk about in this demo, we are working to integrate Bitbucket into Rovo, our AI tool, which will uncover some exciting new capabilities. Keep an eye on our blog for the latest on AI. Let's get started. All right, we're here in Jira, in a Jira issue, and we're gonna create a new branch by clicking on Create Branch. Then we're gonna choose Create Branch in Bitbucket Cloud. It's gonna open up a new screen. From here, we can select our repository. We're gonna make a change to submit image. For type, we're gonna choose feature in this case. We're gonna branch from mainline, and we can see that we've already got a branch name automatically generated, and the branch name has the Jira issue ID in the branch name. So we're gonna click create. From this screen, we can get the git command we need to check out this branch. So we're gonna copy that. We're gonna jump over to the terminal. We're gonna make some changes to our repository. And then we're going to do git add, git commit, and git push. I'm not going to show that. We're just going to fast forward through it. And I'll meet you guys back in the pipeline section of Bitbucket when we're done. Okay, let's open up pipelines in a new tab and take a look at the pipeline that's running. So we can see we have a pipeline after we made a change to back.go. So if we click on this, we can go in and take a look at the steps that are being executed. So this pipeline's got a few steps. It's running unit tests, um, deploying to a test environment, running some integration tests in the test environment, deploying to a staging environment, and running some integration tests in the staging environment. Bitbucket pipelines are defined in code in a file called bitbucketpipelines.yaml. That file contains a definition of all the steps that are going to be on your pipeline, as well as what order they're going to be run in, and what conditions will trigger the pipelines. By default, Bitbucket pipelines run on Atlassian hardware in the Atlassian cloud. However, you can run them on your own hardware in your own data center behind your firewall if you have compliance requirements for that. Atlassian provides some predefined steps that you can use kind of out of the box called Bitbucket Pipes. To find those, you can go to your browser and you can search for Bitbucket Pipes. And you can go to this link, Bitbucket Pipes Integrations. And if you scroll down, you can see that we have currently 101 pipes. If we were looking at something like, say, security, there are 15 pipes. If we scroll down a little bit, we can see that there's a pipe for sneak scan. If you click on any pipe in this group, you can see a, a YAML snippet about how to use this pipeline, along with all the variables that are available for it. If you scroll down further, there's a or explanation of what each variable is and what to put in it. If you scroll down farther, there are even code snippets that you can use. So you can copy these into your Bitbucket pipeline at YAML file and have access to this functionality uh, without having to figure it out yourself. Now that that's done, let's take a look at Bitbucket again, and let's go cut a PR to merge those changes into our mainline branch. To do that, we're going to click on pull requests. Then we're going to click create pull request. And from here, we've got a description. We can also type slash AI and use Atlassian Intelligence to automatically generate a pull request description for us. This scans our code changes and tries to summarize them as best we can. So now we can insert that, saving the developer some time. We've already assigned reviewers to this pull request. These reviewers are assigned automatically based on uh, two files, one called code owners and another called teams.yaml that define which developers are responsible for which um, parts of the repository. So because we made changes to backend back.go and frontend front.go, we pulled developers from both of those sections. Now we can click create pull request to create our pull request. Before we take a look at the pull request, I want to take a look at Bitbucket Pipelines. So we're going to open this in a new tab. Our Bitbucket Pipeline.yaml file defines three steps that are supposed to be run every time a PR is cut. And we can see that this pipeline has failed. So if we click and drill into it, we can see that we've run three steps. First, we've done an AI code review, which uses a Bitbucket pipe to use AI to analyze the code changes and make recommendations. We've run sneak tests, which uses the sneak pipe we looked at earlier to scan for known vulnerabilities. And we've done a Bitbucket secret scan, which checks to see if there are any credentials stored in our source code. For the purposes of this demo, I do have some fake secrets in there, which is why this step failed. So let's go back to our 
pull request now. From this screen, your reviewers can review the code changes that have been made by scrolling down and looking at the center here. They get uh, good insights into what's been changed with the AI code review. From here, they can create tasks by clicking the Create Task button if they want somebody to do something. And the task will show up underneath the Tasks section. They can also create Jira issues. So if they scroll down, they can create a Jira issue by clicking Create Jira issue. Click Create. And if they scroll up, that'll show up under the Jira Issues section. The first Jira issue here is the Jira issue that was used to create this uh, change. And these other two were created in this PR by clicking the Create uh, Jira Issue button. Another thing we can take a look at are the reports that were generated by the Sneak Scanning step and the Bitbucket Secret Scanning step. So if we click on one of these, we can see that there are no vulnerabilities detected currently. We can also click on the Git Secret Scan. And we can see that we did fail this one because there were credentials found in code and tells us what file that we found it. The last thing we're going to take a look at are the merge checks. So if we scroll up, there's this section called merge checks. We can see that we have one of one check pass. You can define uh, merge checks from a whole bunch of predefined merge checks that are available um, from Atlassian. To find those, you can go to repository settings. Then you can scroll down and you can go to branch restrictions. And we can see that we're inheriting some branch restrictions from the uh, project. So you can define uh, branch restrictions and merge checks on each branch, or you can define them at the project level. So if we click on this breadcrumb, we come to this screen, we click project settings, and we click branch restrictions. We can see that we've got some branch restrictions already defined. If we click add branch restrictions, we can define some more. When you add branch restrictions, you can set up branch restrictions uh, based on branch name or pattern or by branch type. There's a variety of things to choose from. If you click on Merge Settings, you can see all the merge checks that you can enable by default. If you're a premium customer, you can also prevent um, merges from happening unless all merge checks are resolved. So by default, without this feature enabled, um, merge checks are optional. That is, they'll show up and they'll let you know um, that they are passing or failing, but they don't prevent a PR merge. Um, with this feature, you can actually force merge checks to be resolved. So this is really nice for platform or engineering leadership to enforce standards across all of your PRs and to make sure that every uh, change meets certain bar before it's merged into mainline. Now, if the merge checks we provide out of the box are insufficient, you can also create custom merge checks using Atlassian's Forge. Uh, and these custom merge checks that you create as Forge apps will show up in your PR um, alongside the regular merge checks. So they look like they're native functionality, but they are running custom code. So this lets you enforce anything you could possibly want um, using your own code. All right, let's head back to our pull request. And from here, we're going to click Approve to approve this pull request. And then we're going to click Merge. We can choose a fast forward strategy, and we're going to click Merge. Now that that PR is merged, we're going to go back over to Bitbucket Pipelines and take a look at the pipeline that kicked off. Now we see immediately that this pipeline is halted. So if we drill in, we can see that there is a change request open for this. So we can open this change request by clicking on it. And this takes us into Jira Service Management. From here, you could go through whatever change approval process you have. We're just going to click Approve and close this tab. And now we can see that our pipeline is kicked off and is running. So this feature can be enabled by going to repository settings, scrolling down to deployments. And if we take a look at our production US West 1, we've got enable deployment gating for this environment checked. So this means that every time a deployment tries to deploy to this environment, um, we're going to pause and create a change request in Jira Service Management that people can review and approve before the deployment will actually do anything and make any changes to production. Adding this manual step in there reduces the risk of having breaking changes get to your production environment by allowing your IT ops team or others to review the changes before they go to production. Now that this pipeline is finished running, let's jump back over to Jira and let's take a look at our Jira issue. Now it's been moved to done by our automations, so we're going to have to scroll all the way to the bottom of the done list and click on it. You can see that the Jira issue has a bunch of linked issues now, and the development panel has been populated. So if we click on this, we can see that there's now one branch. We can jump directly to it from here. We can see we've had a couple commits. We can see that there's a single pull request, which we could jump back into. There's been a couple builds, 
and we've had some deployments to a variety of environments. All of this data was automatically sent to the Jira issue via the Bitbucket integration. So by having these two products integrated, we can automatically keep our teams up to date on the progress of our work without having to go in here and manually make these updates. So it saves developers time and keeps everybody up to date. Now, if we jump back over to Bitbucket, we can also go into Compass really quickly. Compass is our developer experience platform, it has a few really interesting things. One of the things is the activity panel, which gets populated by all the activity that's happening across various integrations such as Bitbucket. You can also develop scorecards and you can have a bunch of metrics showed on the Compass page, including your door metrics. So far, we've seen Bitbucket pipelines that have been defined in a single Bitbucket pipeline.yaml file. If you want to manage your CI CD at scale at a platform level, you can also use dynamic pipelines, which are built using Atlassian's Forge. And these pipelines allow a platform team to specify a set of steps that'll get run in every pipeline. Therefore, they can enforce standards across the organization. To learn more about dynamic pipelines, please check out the video linked in the description. All right, thanks for watching this video. We saw how Bitbucket, Jira, Compass, and Jira Service Management work together to help your teams build end-to-end -end developer workflows. We learned about Bitbucket pipelines and we reviewed the pull request experience. For more information about Bitbucket's dynamic pipelines, please check out the links in the description. You can find more videos like this in the Developer's Edge video series on the Alaskan YouTube channel.